You don't wait for the breakthrough to make a sound. You make a sound to create the breakthrough. Come on, somebody. You need to praise, and your son hasn't come back home yet, and your husband hasn't gotten off drugs yet. See, that's what I'm talking about, and the merger hasn't happened, and you haven't closed the deal, and you haven't gotten the commission. You got to learn to put a sound out then. I'm not praising because God did something. I'm praising because God will move on the sound that I make, and God will cause a breakthrough on my behalf. Can you say amen to that? Whenever God wants something, he doesn't, he doesn't speak to what he wants. He speaks to what holds it. And he tells what holds it to let it go. Meaning God has already put potential in everything. And he commands things to release what's already in them. I'm going to roll with me now. We're going somewhere. God never said, read your Bible, Genesis 1, creation account. God never said, let there be grass. God didn't say, let there be tomato vines, let there be vineyards. He said, let the earth bring forth. In other words, the potential for the wine, the potential for the grapevine, the potential for the oranges, the potential for the peach, the potential for the tomatoes, the potential for the, uh, it, it was all in there. And God said, the earth already has this potential in it. Turn loose what's already in you. So he says, let it go. And he uses the word let like something is restraining it. Let there be. Let there be. Let, so he's talking to something and he's commanding it. God didn't say, let there be Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Uranus. He said, let the heavens bring forth. That means the heavens already had everything that was needed to sustain the galaxies. It was already there. So heavens release what I've already put in you. He didn't say, let there be sea bass and halibut. I could use a square of halibut right now. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, let the waters bring forth. For the potential for fish was already in the water. So he told the water, let go of what's already in you. Now, then he got to man and he created man. When I say that, I don't mean male. He created mankind at that time. And then it says male and female, he created them. So we're just getting to mankind. When he got to man, guess what he talked to? Himself. Let us, let the waters bring forth, let the earth bring forth, let the heaven bring forth. Let us make man in our image. Your mom and dad didn't make you. Your mom and dad gave you a body. Your body is not you. That's why we have graveyards, crematories, and caskets. Because the real you is going to leave your body one day. And you always know where something came from because when it dies, it goes back to it. <laughs> to be absent from the body is to be present with the... You came from God, you go back to God. Life does not begin in heaven. Earthly life begins in heaven. So what do you have? That's why the Bible says be full of the Spirit. That's why the Bible says be led by the Spirit. That's why the Bible says to walk in the Spirit because you are a house for your real you, which is your spirit, to express itself during your time here on earth. And when your time here on earth is done, your body will go back to the dust, but your spirit will go back to God. You came out of God. And when God wanted mankind, he looked in the mirror and talked to himself. Let us make man. And we were God's potential. So when God spoke, we came out of him. <laughs> Are you following me so far? Are you seeing what I'm saying? <clears throat> so what, did, what am I telling you? I'm telling you environment is the key to all potential. 
Adam was born into the presence of God. And even when God commissioned Adam to earth to rule it, God came every day and walked with him in the cool of the day. Archaeologists have never found the Garden of Eden. They cannot find it. They have uncovered countless civilizations. They cannot find the Garden of Eden. You know why? The Garden of Eden is not a location. It's an environment. Eden was not a place. Eden was the presence of God. <laughs> and when, when Adam sinned, what did he get banned from? The presence of God. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And everybody's on Xanax. Oh, y'all want me to talk? Come on, I can't. I'm, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be the real preacher. Amen. Everybody's an addict. Everybody's hooked on this. Everybody's a drug addict, everybody alcoholic, or, or everybody's, you know, opioids and fentanyl. What, what's wrong? In the presence of the Lord, the smile on my face is sustained. In the presence of the Lord, I can deal with anything around me and still have the joy of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. What that tells me is I'm going everywhere to try to find what I've been banned from unless I know how to get back in it. Can I keep going? The first thing God created, if I ask most of you, say God created light. I mean, God created the heavens and the earth. The first thing God created was not heavens and earth and light and on down the litany. The first thing God created was sound. And God said. And if God had never have said, we wouldn't be here. If you want to create in your life, you cannot do it with your mouth closed. You have got to understand that God has on purpose put the power of life and death yes. in your mouth. Amen. Ladies, you can talk him in. You can talk him out. Yes. Men, you can open her heart up. You can close it tight as a bolt. All of it right here. I can win friends. I can make enemies. I can lift the spirits of a whole room. I can make it dread the moment I walked in. Right here. Because that's where God has put the power. So now, let's go. Everything in life follows the sound it makes. Okay. Some of y'all not going to like where I'm going to take you on this. But you'll be all right. Everything follows the. I have never seen people make a depressing sound and be full of joy. I have never seen negative people have positive outcomes. Everything follows the sound it makes. Well, I'm so depressed. Well, quit talking about your depression. Open the blinds. Cut off the blues music. Quit listening to country tear in my beer. And change the sound that's going on in your house and change the sound that's coming out of your mouth. Well, we're so broken, we just don't have the money to do anything, okay? Keep, see, some of you, some seasons that God already wanted you to have exited, your mouth is keeping you in it. There were some seasons God wanted you to go right on through it and pass through, but because you started talking the season that you were in, you are now perpetuating the se that season in your life, and it stays with you and stays with you, and God already wanted you to exit it. Where is it you want to go? you got to begin to put a sound in the atmosphere out there, and then your life will begin to follow the sound you make. Come on, somebody. 
Put gracious sounds out there. Put merciful sounds out there. Put sounds of kindness out there. Put sounds of increase and multiplication and love and prosperity. Put those sounds out of your mouth and those things will start coming to your life like a magnet. You'll begin to attract blessing from everybody. You'll begin to attract honor. You'll begin to attract people. You'll begin to attract friends. Why? Because you know how to use the power of the tongue. Somebody take five seconds and give God shouts of praise. Hallelujah! Every significant power is accompanied by a significant sound. I've been through one tornado that came right over me. I was in a beer cooler in a gas station because it was bolted to the concrete. Came right over the top of the building. You were with me. Yeah, Stephen was with me. Forgot about that. I just hired him. He's like, what am I doing here? This guy done got me in a tornado and I ain't been with him a week. <laughs> Something that can rip buildings off their foundation, but man, you should have heard the sound. A V8 has more power than a four-cylinder and it's much louder than a four-cylinder. You ever seen people that work at the airport? Those jet engines that can take 600,000 pounds and move it 550 miles an hour, but everybody's got earplugs? Because everything with great power has great sound. Why do you think the enemies made our churches so quiet? <laughs> Pretty church. Because the enemy don't want you to make your sound. He wants you to be too proud, too sophisticated, and too cultured, and too accomplished. You got too many degrees on the wall. You got more degrees than a thermometer. Come on. <laughs> oh, whoa. And I can't act like that. I'll let them go up front and act like that, but I can't act like that. Mm hmm You are a shark fighting on the pier. because you're outside of your environment because God inhabits praise. <laughs> Are you mad at me or can I keep going? Is this all right if I keep going? like God wants you to be further along than you are? In this series, Heavenly Chaos from Ron Carpenter, you'll learn that your praise is the key to getting you there. I want you to look at my life and I can be in the midst of hell and something is about to happen. Something is about to turn up. You can't see it, but don't let what you see confuse you because you don't know the sound that I've been making. And my life is not what you see. My life is where I'm saying ah! This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Isn't God good? I, I tell you every week, I never tire of the Word of God. Uh, every moment that I'm in it preparing, he's changing me before I even get to take these things and bring them to you. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the keys of the kingdom that let me access a life that is far beyond this world, but I can bring heaven into the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. I hope that you're enjoying this word. We're going to get right back to it in just a moment, and we're going to finish it out. But I just need to take a moment to do a couple of things to make some people aware of where we are and then take some of you and just say a great big thank you. This is the time where we thank everyone who has been giving to this. I tell you, we never show ads. You don't ever see us doing commercials. We didn't roll away and show you Coca-Cola or Verizon or at and We didn't go away to any of that. Why? Because we believe that Jesus Christ is the greatest cause in the earth. And those other companies, you know what? They'll spend any amount of money because they believe in what they're telling people. They believe in their product. I'm gonna tell you something, I believe in Jesus. And for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. I believe the answer to everything in the world is Jesus Christ. And so I wanna get that answer to every person I can. And right now we're doing it in 149 countries and many of you for weeks, months, years, a few of you for decades have helped us on whatever level you've helped us. Some with one-time gifts here and there, others becoming monthly partners have helped us do what we do. From my heart to your heart, thank you. But we always wanna expand our circle. We always wanna open it up to you. Have you been blessed? Have you been touched? Bless the thing that has blessed you. Have you been strengthened? Strengthen the thing that has strengthened you. Have you been increased? Increase the thing that has increased you. Turn around and reciprocate that blessing back. Would you con consider that one-time gift or becoming a covenant partner with Ron Carpenter Television as we continue to do everything we can to put the gospel of Jesus and his kingdom on every TV set we can in the world? That's our goal. Help us get there. So many need to hear. So many need to know. And for your first time or first month's gift of any size, this is our gift to you to say thank you and that we do not take it for granted. We know you believe in Jesus and we want you to believe that we are doing everything we can to get Jesus out of here, into there, into the world. God bless you as you give. Now let's get back to the message. Sound precedes, goes before a manifestation. Now, this is a huge shift because what do most people do? They went back and took another x-ray and the, and the tumor was gone. So they come to church. I got to give God a praise. And they've been turned down six times, but these people gave them the loan on the house. And I'm going to be the first person in my family in California to ever own property. And I got to give God, I'm going to give God a praise today. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But here's what you think. You're thinking that once God has broken through, you make a sound. Not understanding you would have got the first loan. If you knew that you don't wait for the breakthrough to make a sound, you make a sound to create the breakthrough. So you got to praise for prosperity while you don't have enough money to buy Coke. You need, to come up. you need to praise for the new car while the old one's on the side of the road. You need to come down to the front with the preacher and praise while the tumor is still there. Come on, somebody. You need to praise and your son hasn't come back home yet and your husband hasn't gotten off drugs yet. See, that's what I'm talking about. And the merger hasn't happened and you haven't closed the deal and you haven't gotten the commission. You got to learn to put a sound out then. I'm not praising because God did something. I'm praising because God won't move on the sound that I make and God will cause a breakthrough on my behalf. Can you say amen to that? I know what time it is, but I got a little bit more. Can I give you a little bit more? <laughs> now that's a big shift right there. That changes everything. Because here again, that's where the foolishness of praise comes in. Because everybody around you knows you broke. And you're down there spinning around like you own the top of the world and you own the bank. Yep, that's right. <laughs> and I'm going to praise my way all the way there till every door opens up. Hallelujah. See. <laughs> Jesus. Every, okay, 
Let's do something, let's do something. Okay, let's say, let's say there's something major coming against our city and our region and we got to get together as God's people and we got to go to what we got to turn in. We got to go from a family to an army and we got to enter in and I mean, we got to pray and we got to storm the enemy's gates. Okay. Okay. That has to have a sound. Give me a tribal sound. God said the enemy, if he be found, has to return sevenfold that which has been taken from me. And I tell you right now, though a thousand fall at my right side and a thousand fall at my right hand, no harm shall befall me because I have made the Most High my dwelling place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Give him praise. Y'all don't have to. Y'all can stay. You ain't got to leave. You can stay. <laughs> and after you fight, you're tired. You're beat up. You're weary. You're emotionally exhausted. You're spent. Take me beside still waters. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He makes, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid. I'll fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. And your rod and your staff that comforts me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You let me eat in front of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Keep playing. Just keep playing. Do you see, you went from fight to still waters because somebody put a sound out there that let you go. You've heard me say, I wanted to do this years ago, but I didn't have all the pieces in play. You can't, you can't start taking piano lessons last week and do that. The Bible says David assembled skilled musicians to bring the right atmosphere to the tabernacle, he got skilled musicians. <laughs> and these are, these are just kingdom laws. The very foundational laws of what a praise and worship service should look like. And I want you to know it don't have to be pretty. And I want you to know the front is open. I want you to know the aisles are open. Some of you need to go out of here and you got something you, you need to fight. Some of you need steel waters bad. But everything follows the sound. Pastor, the temperature of my house is way too high. Change the sound. My wife won't speak to me. Change the sound. Change the sound. I'm in a season. I feel like I can't get out. Change the sound. 
Everything follows the sound that it makes. Everything. I've never seen a jet go left and the sound go right. And you hear the jet before you see it. You hear the train before you see it. Elijah is standing in drought, famine, and said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It hadn't rained in three and a half years. But he heard it before he... They were in the upper room. And there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing man. Then tongues of fire set upon... The fire of the Holy Ghost didn't come till after the sound. You know what? I'm standing here with my wife, Hope, and I'm going to let her tell you something amazing that's happening. But before we do, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Pastor, it can't be that easy. It is it that is. easy. He said, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. It goes like this, Lord, I believe you died and rose from my sins. I ask you to forgive me this day. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to cleanse me and wash me and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you put your faith in him and prayed that prayer, I need you to write us, email us, direct message us. You got to do something to let us know that you made that decision because it is the best decision you ever made for this life yeah. and for eternity. God bless you in your new journey as you walk with Jesus. And who? You got something really exciting happening. Absolutely. Tell everybody. Absolutely, and especially to those of you who just gave your life to Jesus. You know, it's a common misconception that once you get saved, that rainbows just pop out over your <laughs> life and tulips pop out all over your path and nothing bad happens. And that is just not true. You've it's just engaged in the fight of your life. And I am here to tell you by my new book, if you don't fight, then you don't win. That is how you become great, one battle at a time. Listen, this book will teach you how to change your defeatist mindset, ooh, ooh. how to overcome adversity. Listen, it'll teach you how to harness life's pressure so that they work for you and not against, not against you. I want to get this in the hand of every believer. Just go to Hope's Inner Circle, H-O-P-E-S Inner Circle Dot com. You can get a free copy today. Yes, you can, very just free to mm -hmm. your house when you join the Inner Circle or you can just buy the book. I want it to bless you. I want to be a part of your life and I know that this right here needs to be a part of everybody's library. Check this out. She's a profound and prolific writer. I've even been impressed myself. And look, until next time, we love you here at Ron Carpenter Television and we hope we get to see you real soon. See, some of you, some seasons that God already wanted you to have exited, your mouth is keeping you in it. Where is it you want to go? You got to begin to put a sound in the atmosphere, and then your life will begin to follow the sound you make. Do you feel like God wants you to be further along than you are? In this series, Heavenly Chaos from Ron Carpenter, you'll learn that your praise is the key to getting you there. I want you to look at my life, and I can be in the midst of hell, and something is about to happen. Something is about to turn up. You can't see it, but don't let what you see confuse you because you don't know the sound that I've been making. And my life is not what you see. My life is where I'm saying that. Ah! This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.